Amira Hall. She's a psychic mentor and does loads of stuff all in the spiritual side. As I say, the, she gave me a reading before the show and it was very interesting and she brought up things that she wouldn't possibly know, which is a great giveaway for me to know that she's tuning in and she's getting the right information. And it was the, the classic reading where I should up and she talks and I like that. You know, I like that kind of reading, so that's great. And then I was teleported instantly to this grand hallway, and I think, geez, was I... Good evening, folks. Welcome to Circle of White Light Radio with myself, Alan James. It's the 15th of January, 2023. Good evening. How is everybody doing? Hello to everybody logging into the chat room there. Good evening to everybody there. Right. Now, my guest on the show tonight is a lady called Amira Hall, who's a psychic mentor. And this is a kind of strange one because I, Amira has just given me a reading an hour before we went live. So we're just hot off the press with a reading from Amira and it went very well. I was very impressed. It was my kind of reading and I'll go into more detail when I bring Amira on and I'll explain why I like the kind of reading that Amira did. Okay, folks, you know the website circlewhitelight.com, Patreon dot com forward slash c o w l or if you want to stay up to date on the information that I post out, jump on the website, type in your email and subscribe to the mailing list and you'll be kept up to date with that. T shirts are available. If you send uh, an email to me and contact us at circlewhitelight.com, they are ten euros plus postage and packing. Okay, I'm gonna bring my guest in now. My guest is Amira Hall um, she's a world-class psychic mentor and a master of spirit communication. She's an international clairvoyant, medium, author and spiritual mentor. After healing herself from autoimmune illness, then having a near-death experience while traveling in Egypt, she is following her deep spiritual calling. Amira is dedicated to providing spiritual tools and guidance to seekers going through their ascension process, reaching higher levels of awareness. Along with being the creator of the Reveal, a life mastery healing intensive and clairvoyant training program, she is the author of five books, including Manifesting Miracles 101. God, we could do with a few of them. Good evening, Amira. How are you? I love that introduction. Thank you. It's such a pleasure and honor to be with you and all the listeners. Thank you, Alan. Well, thanks, That's all you do. Thanks for coming on. Now, before we get into the reading that you did for me before the show, which was very, very impressed with. And thanks for doing that. We'll get into that. Let's just rewind back because I didn't read out your full title. And let's read out your full title, which is REV, which is that reverend? Yes. Yes, I am a reverend. Oh, yeah, you're a reverend. And the MS, MSC, that's the corporate qualification, is it? It's a Master's of Metaphysical Science, and I'm a PhD candidate, and I'm ready to submit the PhD thesis. So that's where I'm standing. Fantastic. Okay, well, before we get into the reading, what I want to find out about is this near-death experience and your awakening, because I, which is what I always ask my guests, because there's always, there's always a catalyst in their lives. It could be an accident, it could be a medical issue, unemployment. There's always a trigger in people's lives that wake them up to get them to peek behind the curtain. So tell us, was your near-death experience uh, the catalyst or were you awake before that happened? Well, you know, I love that people call things awake. Because back in 1991, when my dad died, and I was divorced, um, and then I was diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, and the doctor told me to go home, prepare my affairs, because I would die or end up in a wheelchair. I never considered that a wake-up call. I never called that an awakening. But I guess in today's description, that would be it, right? Yeah, yeah. And so at the time... I was struggling with grief. I was struggling with the loss of my father and my marriage and myself. I was in corporate and had a very successful six-figure income way back in the 80s. Um, so I was on a real fast path. But it all came to a screeching halt. I had to focus on my physical body. And because they told me there was no cure, I directed my attention to surviving. 
and and I, when you're in survival mode, you just want to fix the basic, most visible problem. Yeah. And and years passed, and I did. I started detoxing at quite a great length. I started to learn about parasites. I started to reverse the, all the symptomology that I was experiencing. And again, I was secretly, you know, working in the corporate world at the time. I wasn't really outward of of talking to um people about what I was curious in or interested in. I was taking, you know, cl- spiritual classes here and there. And I studied with the, the consciousness of the Christ, the Christ consciousness. I studied a lot of different trainings, um, but never really got very deep. Right. Okay. And then until I, um, it started to get a lot stronger, a, a yearning for more because I was healthier, I had more energy, I was on track, I was making six figures, you know, everything was going good, right? But something was missing. I started hearing a voice, like it was a chanting voice, like a song. And and I didn't know what it was. And a friend gave me this brochure for Peru. She goes, I think you need to go to Peru. And I'm so I, I contacted the leader, I went on the trip. And quite honestly, the entire flight from San Diego to Peru, it was a full day travel and I had to go through Miami and a lot of different flights. The entire, each leg of the, of the, of the trip, I sobbed because I thought I was going to die. And I thought it was a literal death. Mm. And, uh, I remember writing cards to every member of my family telling them how much I loved them. And I got to Peru and worked with a shaman in the jungle and had an experience of coming through a stargate. And I had no word. I didn't know what that was. Those were brand new words to me in 1997. So I saw myself as a flash of light that came to earth in early Egypt. That's those were the words early Egypt. And it was sort of Northeast of where Egypt was. So it must've been in Egypt. Uh, Egypt was much bigger than we see it today. And, um, and I came into the human form. That's all I knew. And I also knew that I needed to go to Egypt the following year. And that's when I took a spiritual journey to Egypt, more curious, more, you know, looking for discovery and understanding who I was and where I came from and what it was all about. And I remember just stepping on the, you know, in Cairo and all the, the confusion and the hustle and the bustle and the chaos in the airport. I thought I was at home. Um, just the vibration of the place, not the people and the chaos, but because uh, I lived with that in growing up. Okay. <laughs> uh, but but um, that was that was you know going on a two week spiritual journey and stepping into the temples of uh, into mysteries and of the unknown or, or tapping into interdimensional awareness that I that I carried with me um, was monumental. And it was there near the Valley of the Kings when I extended my stay um, where I actually had the near-death experience. And again, that catapulted me out of my body and into the realms of the unknown, you know, in terms of 3D. And that's kind of where my life changed. I often said, you know, coming back was actually the real story because Everything was different. I was different. I couldn't function in the old ways. And I saw things different. And you were talking in your preamble about how dark things are in the world. And, you know, the confusion and the chaos. That's kind of what I saw coming back. Mm. back, And that was in 1998. So not much has changed, I'm afraid. Maybe gotten worse. Maybe more people are seeing it. Which is, I think, a precursor to the Great Awakening. Of of a, a different kind. It's not just what our politicians are doing, but who are we, and what's our contribution? That's it. It's not what everybody else is doing. Well, and you, you know, to answer the big question of what you ask the audience, it's like, how do we change this? We change ourselves. It's it starts within. It's an inside job. That's been my journey. I and I agree with that because the whole idea of the adult mind is something that we all have to get to. You know, I talk about the adult mind from a psychological point of view, but the listeners 
who know I've talked about this, I've done seminars on this about the, the psychology of who we are. We have to put our big boy, big girl pants on and go from the teenage mind to the adult mind and which means we move away from ego, victim and the um uh, the the selfish mentality and we get into humility and wisdom with the adult mind and by doing that we become better people we become like real adults you know and we take responsibility for ourselves and we don't blame everybody else and and that's the whole idea of the adult mind when people have an NDE and I've spoken to a few people that have had them they normally meet an entity whether that's your spirit guide or someone and they obviously go through some spiritual experience and are told, look, it's not your time yet. You have to go back. Did this happen? Did you see any of this at all? Well, I'll tell you what. Mine is a little bit complicated getting into what actually happened on that day. Because where I was at the Valley of the Kings and because it was triggered by marijuana joint in, and I don't smoke and I had done a detox before I went to Egypt – it really knocked me out of my body. So, you know, and why I say all that is because I still am trying to analyze it and put it all together. Mm -hmm. And when I came, so I went out of my body. I went to the outer edge of the universe or somewhere. But the part that I retained in that day was me shooting through the universe again. As it looked like a streak of light, like a comet. And I came back, but I was seeing the earth way far in the distance. And to all those flat earthers, <laughs> from my, from my perspective, it was round. And maybe that was a program. I don't know, but it was round and it was way off in the cosmos. And it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And as I found my, got closer, I'm like, how am I going to find myself? It is too big of a place. And so it was the voices of my friends in the Arabic language I didn't understand, but it was like a, a spiritual GPS. It sort of landed me to where I was, the memory. So as I, it was hard getting back into my body. So the hu, so again, I don't even have words to put all this together yet. Um, okay. it, it was, so I, trying to get into the body was that one, part of it right and then what i started to experience is seeing things that i didn't understand and what i was and i even tried to understand was i completely in my body yet who what what was going on with my frequency when i got so that day i traveled from luxor to egypt uh cairo then from cairo to new york when i landed in the jetway and into the airport in new york new york jfk all the people looked like walking paper dolls, black and white, flat, two-dimensional. And the only frequency that I was tapping into was anger and grief and a, just a heavy, dark aggression. And that energy stuck with me for probably nine months where I went to healers and psychics and more psychics and more psychics until I got fed up and they all pissed me off. And I just said, you know what? You're a bunch of, you know, whatever's I didn't trust anybody at that point. Like what happened to me? I'm different. Um, shortly after I got fired from my great job. And when I started to understand that I was seeing energy and seeing through things, all I could ask was, where did I go? What happened to me? And how come I got ripped off and didn't see the so-called light that I've heard people talk about? And it wasn't until I went to the uh, Los Angeles, um, it was the Book Expo of America, because I knew I had a story and I wanted to write about it. And absolutely everybody ridiculed me. Nobody wanted to hear my story. Nobody wanted was interested. So I went home defeated. And I started to speak to a number of groups and the INs, and I was part of uh, several documentaries. Um, but honestly, I got to a point where I stopped wanting to talk about it. Oh, I, I missed the most important part. It wasn't until I went for a massage. Okay, so they're giving out all these free books at, at the Book Expo of America. And I was schlepping these, these fabric tote bags, like 
loaded down with maybe 20 books, hardcover books that were all free, right? That I'm never going to read, but I thought I would. Okay. And, and so I was, oh my God, I thought I was going to just collapse. So <laughs> stupid human tricks that we do, right? Mm. And so I thought, I got, I got to get a massage. I have just got to get a massage. I, w- I found a Chinese massage place. And there was this man that came in the room, a very small, you know, framed Asian man. And I, you know, head down, I'm going for the massage. Well, he starts walking on my back. And that's when I left the body and went through the tunnel. Okay. I went through the tunnel and found out where I went and what I was supposed to bring back. That was my trigger. And I knew there was a book in there. But it just took forever. But I, I really got to the point of not wanting to talk about it because so many people ridiculed me. You know, that was over 20 years. So 25 years ago. And so that was what happened. You know, I was, that was sort of really, the internet was just getting going, right? There wasn't a lot of support group or yeah. communities that could, you know, recognize what happened to me. And so I just needed to survive. I just need to bring my life back, right? That's all I wanted. Yeah. Just like everybody else, we we just want to manifest what we want. Forget about anything else, right? I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk about. It. I didn't want to touch that stuff. And so, really, it wasn't until last December where I got a real kick in the ass again. Spirit saying, "You know, you've got to show up. You've got to be visible." That was my word for night for 2021 visibility. And so that's where I really pushed myself to really, you know reach more people and really because I know now more than ever I know this with all my heart and soul is that people are looking for answers and many of us who are awake we just don't know who to trust or a lot of the information is confusing and how do we distill it down to making it usable and make it real tangible and manifest into 3D like you and I spoke about in your reading yeah that's the whole the whole gist of why we're here Exactly. And, and that's something that, and for the listeners and people who are listening to the show now, I'm sure they're probably saying, what's my destiny? How do I know what my destiny is? How do I know what I have to do for the greater good? Because um, when you wake up and you realize that what's going on and the game that's being played by the elites and the cabal and you step away from that and the things that you used to be interested in and friends and family that you had an interest in, you've actually met, met, kind of stepped away from that and people have this burst of inspiration and maybe energy or wanting to do something but they're trying to find their niche as to where the spirit want me to go which is something that I talk to you about obviously in the reading and we will get to that in a minute but from a a wider aspect of for our listeners who are listening in tonight and listening to the podcast what way would you guide them once the awakening has happened and if they're saying how do i find out what my destiny is or what i do for humanity how can i make the change now i know i agree you said earlier on you know you have to change yourself first and i totally agree with that we all have to become adults but at the same time, people want to do service to others and want to be a part of it and you want to do something. So what would be your recommendation and what would you suggest that they do? Well, can I step back a little bit, please, mm-hmm. and just talk about the biggest message that I got in my NDE was, you know, it, yes, I did see the light. I was sort of taken. I was asked if I wanted it wasn't like, are you coming back? Because I had already chosen to come back at some level, but they were giving me a tour of the all. And it was like, I went in first to a, a giant boardroom and there were, well, there were 12 members there. They were all dressed identical and they had these glowing heads of light. The top of their heads opened and there was a stream of light that just streamed right into my head. And they told me that I can know whatever I need to know whenever I need to do it. And then I was teleported instantly to this grand hallway. And in the hallway, there were all these doors and infinite amounts of doors. And today I I reflect on that and I think, gee, was I in the Hall of Records? And they showed me, I went to the right, into that door, and I immersed into the door, into this realm that was like a moving color of kaleidoscope. 
or kaleidoscope full of color. It was just moving patterns and, and beautiful light and light that I can't even describe, colors that I can't describe in earthly form. So I said, well, where am I? And they said, this is love. This is the fabric of all creation. Mm. This is, and that was who I was. I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay immersed in that, but they told me you can't stay. So then I was whisked out of that, teleported to the next door that I chose to go in. And as I sent, sent, stepped into, through that vibration or into the vibration, it was sort of an opaque green. And this opaque green told me and showed me, it was like a life review, but it showed me where all my emotions were stuck like on a timeline of my life. And those emotions, those feelings were actually creating the dysfunction, the dis-ease and death. Death of my dreams, death of my goals, death of what I was here to do, my purpose. And that my mission was to clear and understand how to use that information to then be what I was there to be, which was energy. To be in the purpose mm. is to know who I am, which is energy. Mm. But to be able to manage it, to direct it, to influence the outside world. And that answers the bigger question that you pose to the listeners. What are we here to do? How do we do it? How do we take action? It's not about action. It's not about doing or it's about a being. We are here to be all that we are. And when we own that, when we integrate that and, and vibrate at that frequency, that is what triggers the changes. And you might not have to lift a real finger. <laughs> you might have to say something to somebody. You might even be inspired to go down to your local office and, you know, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't wish that on anybody's into politics but my point is we'll know we will all know our position and our role yes. when we are in alignment yeah that's the thing trying to find out i mean the irish people are very reserved um by nature we are very kind of laid back and uh, i ha i used to say it every now and again on, on my radio show that i had the dial-in facility for people to phone in to the show and everything else and very rarely did people dial in um, and it's and I'd say, well, why don't you dial in? Ah, you're fine. It's okay. I'll just listen to the show. I I'm, I won't be dialing in. I won't be interacting. Um, so the phone line is actually not available at the moment, but I was there for a while. Maybe when I when I do studio too, or when I get around to that. But yeah, we're very kind of reserved, and maybe that's just either our nature, or maybe things you know in our history as well. Uh, certain things in their history that has, have happened but yeah i do think that we have to number one work on ourselves first and number two then um grab the bull by the horns and, and you know do what we feel needs to be done especially when it's part of education and to make the changes we need and you know uh, and i always say to people you know again i know probably the regular listeners are fed up with me saying it but you look at the psychologically you look at the six closest people around you and you ask yourself do they add positivity in my life and if there's one or two that add negativity you keep them at a distance because they're just going to drag your energy down and if you have six people in your life that add positivity well the positivity breeds positivity so that's what we need to do to protect our own energy and i'm i'm in a kind of a bit of a cleansing at the moment there's a couple of things that over the years i've been doing to doing a bit of cleansing regarding energy and i still have work to do um which you know need, something needs to be done um and i need to work on it but the main thing is is finding out one of the things i've said before with readings and as i said we will get to my reading a mirror but one of the things that i've done is um i've made the call you know to spirit as we've all done i'm sure you know driving in the car or being at home and just thinking about stuff and putting the call out there to the universe and do the manifesting and say to our guides or wherever we go, look, you know, this is what I want to do or wouldn't it be great, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And the answer machine is on. Hello, uh, this is Alan's uh, spirit guide at the moment. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not available to take a call right <laughs> now. But if you leave a message, I'll get back to you, Alan, as soon as I can. And, of course, the answer machine has been on for such a long time now. So... 
But then again, we had the reading and you explained a few things to me. And obviously we won't go into too much detail. But I will say to the listeners um, about the reading, Amira gave me a reading just before the show. And she gave me the reading which I like. Because there's different types of readings out there that people do. But Amira is the, what I would call the bread and butter reading. Where I shut up and don't say anything and she tells me everything. Which is great. (laughs) Which is the kind of reading I like. Because then when Amira tells me something that she wouldn't possibly know, I go, okay, that's great. Uh, That's, she's on the right path. She's getting the information through. And basically that's the kind of reading that Amira gave me. And that's the kind of reading I like, folks. So if you want a reading from uh, from someone like Amira, where you shut up and she gives you the information and she talks to you and tells you things, then that's the kind of reading you want. Then you can give Amira a show and uh, she'll give you that reading. Um, and we had a chat in the reading, a few things being mentioned. Um, unfortunately, you know, the listeners know that I've talked about the change of the show, whether I purely go to podcasting, And I stopped the live show on the Sunday because it's a big commitment. I mean, every Sunday for the last 12 years, near enough on and off, I've been doing this, you know, and it's a big commitment. And you have to kind of run your life around it, where when you do podcasting, it's ad hoc. It's whenever you want to do it. Um, And um, so the information that came through, folks, and I don't know whether how you feel about it, if people who are long time listeners to OIM and to Circle of White Light is that apparently spirit want me to do more um uh, kind of you know video work and be out speaking to people about what's going on and stuff like that which is kind of not my bag but apparently that's what they want me to do so um without going into too much detail in the mirror <laughs> do you want to do you want to kind of elaborate on that really from what spirit said well, you know, I, I just want to back up and I understand your heritage. I've been to Ireland. I love Ireland. I'm Canadian and I was raised in the West of Canada. So I think our, our, the way we are is quite similar. And for years, Alan, I fought this notion of who me? Why, why should I be speaking? What, who, who am I to bring some information to somebody? I, I'm just a little old girl from Edmonton, you know? I didn't feel like I had any place, you know, blabbering like, you know, I had all these opinions and judgments on show offs, you know, and in fact, I I know a big part of my family pattern was, oh, don't show off or don't don't speak up or oh, we don't want to cause trouble. Right. I was the shit disturber in the family because I did call people on their stuff. So I get that. I get the the nature. And that's exactly what we have to clear is our conscious, that that, um, unconscious programming and patterns from our family, from our cultures, and those of us who are called to speak. I mean, I've been forced out. Here's my Canadian. I heard it. (laughs) And, and, And we're being forced to shine in areas perhaps that have been awkward or uncomfortable. That stretch is where we shine. And others need to, are, are looking to be inspired. And um, so I know I'm, I went back to something, but back to your reading is, is that. You're, you're, he, you inspire so many people. And I think that's the love that you carry in your frequency. Spirit wants you to show up. And as I said, in the very beginning, I think of your reading is in a different way, doing what you're doing, perhaps in a way that will um, bring you some freedom that you're wanting and some relief and maybe some new enjoyment that you never thought was possible. Hmm. Yeah, it's the whole thing. I suppose we have a, a battle with with money to a certain extent because the, the alt media, I mean, I mentioned this to you, that the alt media is saturated with a lot of radio shows and they have paywalls and subscriptions and, and, and books and and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, the, the whole spiritual side, I definitely get because I've been involved in that and having readings can help so many people. And so a, apart from that side, I'm just talking about, you know, people who are setting up radio shows. And this is something, and I'm saying this to the listeners so I want to get their input and I want to get the people on the, the, the listeners on the chat room, their input as well on this. But 
I've said time and time again that, you know, the, the radio show is purely, it's not a business. I do it out of a moral conscience to try and help people to wake up to see what's going on. And it's not about making money and people know what I do with the donations, you know, every month. Um, and that's how I feel about the radio show. However, there are people who go around and can do talks and obviously write books and stuff, but mainly do talks and educate and uh, maybe there's a small charge for that. I don't know. So um, I don't know how the listeners feel about that and the, the, the folks in the chat room. You know, would I be the kind of person that you would hire to uh, come in to and chat to 10 people, 20 people in a room about what's going on? Would that be of interest to people to, to do that and have a, um, a little donation or something like that? I don't know. I mean, we, as I say, I've spoken at seminars. Myself and Steve have done a couple of seminars over here in Ireland, which was great information, and we put it out there. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, as you said, uh, Amira, um, you obviously had to deal with this issue and, you know, little on me, what do I do? Um, but you sucked it up. You actually, you know, stepped outside your comfort zone and you did it and now you're doing it. And um, you probably feel a lot better with it. And there's always going to be that time where, you know, our ego wants to come in and protect us, you know, and that's why it's hard sometimes to step outside the comfort zone. Um, but I suppose if we don't do it and don't try it, we'll never know, will we? <laughs> We won't. And, you know, it, it hasn't been uh, all fun and games. I, I'm learning tremendous amounts of things like it, technology's changing in the blink of an eye. It's so accelerating. And, you know, I remember thinking back about 12 months ago, thinking, oh, my God, I, I don't know if I can keep up. I don't have to have the, the vibration. And quite honestly, that's when I dove deeper and I dig deeper in my own energy. So all the work I do with my clients is about energy clearing. It's not my job to tell you what to do. Alan, you've got to clear the energies that are blocking your spirit from shining. And, and for everybody else listening, that's it. Because your spirit and your alignment with the Supreme, the Source, God, whatever you want to call it, is it should be, can be a direct link. And you will know exactly what to do in the minute, in the second. But we, the human self, talks ourselves out of all of these opportunities and possibilities. And I still think, that, Alan, you're not seeing the potential of where and how you could structure, monetize the work you do and the gift that you have to support people, but also to be rewarded and to really, and we're, we all, I believe, have issues of feeling like we're worthy or deserving what others want to exchange or share with us. But if we first don't acknowledge and claim our worth, know our worth, not claim it, mm. to, to align with the truth of who we are will never be rewarded. And whether or not you give everything away or you actually pay your rent, mm. who, who's – what what difference is that? Because a roof over your head and paying the rent helps and supports you in doing more work. Yeah, no. You're still giving. So if you're in alignment with who you are, why are you judging where the money goes and what it's for? It's yeah. not like you're using, it's a total materialistic thing to go out and buy an Aston Martin. That's not the purpose of it. And even if you did, who's to say, what, if you were rewarded that handsomely to purchase a vehicle of that nature and desired it. God wants you to have your desires. We're, 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 I think all programmed as to, I was a good Catholic girl. Okay. We were all programmed by the people that raised us that being selfish was a good thing. And that to be humble and to be without is actually a better way of being. And I, I dis disagree. I think we are wealthy beyond means and our creator, our God, our father, it, it's written in many great books asking ye shall receive. Mm. Not to say, oh, no, 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 that's too much. Oh, no, that's too expensive. Why'd you do that? <laughs> you know, and so it's aligning with that and going yes to the universe. However, that shows up. 
Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to put my, my neck out on the show now. And I will say to anybody listening to the show that if you have a few friends that want to get together as a group and you want me to pay a visit down and uh, have a chat and I, I would say there won't be a charge but we'll have a donation to cover the petrol fees and stuff like that and a, and a bit of food um, but if the listeners want me to go down and do a talk and talk about the things that we can talk about on the show and other things then I'm more than happy to do that to um, to, to put, it, put it out there uh, for the listeners now so it's out there I'm not going to back Congratulations! <laughs> I think that's so, and it's so much fun to meet some of your listeners, and who knows where it could spring from there, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I'll put it out there because it's been. Um, this is not the first time in a reading that uh, it's been said to me regarding about going out there, putting my face out there, going on camera, doing the videos, doing the talks, doing the books, and um, because that's where spirit want want me to be. Um. But yeah, I suppose I'm just kind of, you know, in my comfort zone. But I don't Yeah, again, you're stodgy. <laughs> yeah, but mind you, I, I have done it. I have, I have done, yeah, you know, yeah, a couple yeah. of video, video interviews and I have done actually a couple of seminars, um, and spoke, you know, so, you know, so I have done it. So I've, you know, uh, but I, I need to, it. I need, you know I, what? It's our, honey, it's, it's our energy. Yeah. We get tired. Mm. It's called burnout. Mm. It's called burnout in modern day psychology. I just call it worn out. <laughs> you know, we're worn out because we've been, you know, you know, burning the fire and we haven't been stoking it. We haven't been healing ourselves at the deeper levels or clearing all of those amazing things that we manifested and all the energy that you put out to all of these wonderful listeners. You haven't reclaimed. That's what I teach people do is how to reclaim their energy and separate their energy from other people. And that, in, it's like, it's like turning on the inferno. It's like putting the gas on the flame. Yeah, because the way things are now at the moment in the world, it's a real, I suppose I have to use the words, it's a real shit show at the moment because of everything that's going on in Ireland and the UK and America is no different. And oh, yeah, it's ugly. So there's a load of change going on, loads of energy changes going on. There's a load of predictions from different people out there saying different things are going to happen. And some of the time, well, let's just say there's certain predictions that I've had guests on the show that didn't happen and apparently just been delays. But I will be going there with the guest and getting that person back on to tell us what's going to happen. <laughs> but um, so we, so does does one side of the uh, the one group saying that we're here for the three day experience and we'll carry on until we pass over and that's it. Does other people saying that we're going to have a massive solar flash and um, that's going to make a massive change on the planet and we're going to shift the frequency on the planet and then there's another planet ready for us. And so all this stuff is going on. Now, I know it sounds a bit woo-woo, but I'm just wondering with the readings and stuff that you've done, have you heard about any of this? And if you have, tell us what your opinion is on that. Look, I... I tune in to some of these shows and I'm on telegram and I'm sort of listening with one ear, a lot of what's going on. And my guidance, my guides have basically told me to shut it down and to focus on what I want to create. And I, I, I know what the other side is like. Mm. I am not afraid of death. So, you know, like many people, I'm like, bring it on. Let's move out of here because it is pretty, to use your words, a shit show. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's been many times I'm, I'm human, too. And uh, I just want to like, oh, shit, you know, it's just I can't deal with it anymore. Well, th the problem is there's a lot of people out there just yapping and they're not doing the work. Mm. Even psychics, they're not doing their own work. Yeah. What good does it do to have a prediction? It, it's. We are creating our reality. What the hell do you want to create? Mm. Come back to taking personal responsibility. That was a key thing in my NDE that I learned is that my thoughts, my feelings, and my expressions, however I show up, create my experiences. And that's everything in the world around me. Mm. 
and I'm wholly responsible for those creations. So I have to back up and say to myself, do I want to align myself with people that are creating these amazing things in their life and changing lives and focusing on that and transforming? I mean, when I work with clients, their lives completely change and, and they create and inspire me in ways that are like amazing. And so that's what we're here to do is keep imp- impressing ourselves on uh, how amazing we are. Mm. So that's what I want to focus on. Not all of the chaos. Yes, I can see it happening, but, and I, I realize that there's intentional darkness that is definitely trying to thwart the light. But each of us has our responsibility in shining that light in our own inner ones. Our vibrations send ripples and we grow the, the collective light. And that's the force of nature that we want to bring to earth in in body Mm -hmm. that is the great awakening that i know and in fact one of my meditations i've been to egypt now 13 times i just came back again in in november and one of the meditations i was sitting on the balcony i think it was in sharma sheik or her just relaxing one day and and this was in 2009 and i remember asking like what the hell is this great awakening all about because back then we were all talking about you know the great changes and the mayan calendar coming to an end in 2012 mm. so i asked my guide and this this light being appeared i i felt its presence i didn't see it it was standing behind. It was like a great orb, uh, a, a, a an ecliptical orb. It wasn't. It was like an oval shape. And this being said to me, "Imagine today you're a caterpillar, and tomorrow you're a butterfly." That's what 2012 is about. This being then said to me, "And beware, there will be many charlatans among you." Oh yeah. So I reflect on that constantly. Where am I at? Am I in the garden yet? I don't know that I am. Mm. I feel like I'm coming out of my cocoon and I'm immersing myself. But, you know, thinking of the unfolding of a butterfly newly, you know, formed, there's a process of that. And to distill that into our time space reality, I don't know what that looks like. Does is this chaos part of our cocoon? Is the chaos the part of the caterpillar melting down into a complete, you know, mucus melt? Well, I think the the chaos is the the the, the baby, the 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 woman giving birth, and we're going on the way down the birth canal, and there's loads of kind of screaming and pain and everything else, you know. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but this process we have to go through. I mean, Dolores Cannon did say, you know, to clean up the dirt, you have to see the dirt first. And what we're seeing now is all the dirt coming to the surface. And people have to now accept that it's happening because before they were just um, oblivious to it or they wouldn't accept it. You know, well, constantly. and that dirt is shaking them up, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's just like my pain and my trauma and my grief with my father and my divorce threw me into absolute chaos. Yeah. And then my health. So we unfortunately are dumbass humans. We need a trigger, a smack in the head to say, frickin' wake up. Stop it. Yeah. And that's that's basically maybe that's what uh, what <laughs> happens in their life is that that trigger that something has to happen as part of our awakening. I mean, put it this way, if we had a very easy life and nothing happened, we wouldn't learn much, really. It's the difficult issues that get put in front of us, these these life lessons that get put in front of us, that we learn to actually get over or learn from and move on. And then if we don't learn from it, then it comes in again in another way until we do learn from it. That's my understanding of it, this journey. Because we're here to learn. I mean, that's why we're here. We're here to learn. And and um, if if we if we had a fairly easy life and we didn't have any, you know, life lessons, then what would we be learning? Very little. So that's the way I see it. Anyway, 
Um, we have a few questions come in. And so if anybody in the chat room has any more questions, you know what to do. Put Q or question at the start so I can see it and pick it up on the chat room. So the first question is from Critical Ali. And they say, does uh, Mira feel the life review she spoke about is for self-reflection and not for judgment by another? Does she feel we can return to fix or correct mistakes we made in the past? I.e., do we reincarnate until we reach ascension levels of understanding? That's a, that's a great question. Um, let's see. First of all, my life review was for me. And I don't believe the life review is ever to be judged. It's a place to acknowledge the lessons and to understand that I have an opportunity to course correct and what to do to course correct. Correct, And that's what my journey is, course correct, correction every single day. And I think <clears throat> understanding who I am and understanding the nature of energy and myself I get to course correct and continue to build that awareness at a higher and higher level to become a master that regardless. And, and yes, I do believe that we continue on. I believe I've, I've talked and read, did, done so many readings of people. I've seen them in past lives. I've seen my own past lives and I know much of my wisdom comes from past lives and from the star system that I came from. And so, but Hey, I'm that little old Canadian girl, right? Mm. And so who am I to think I'm from the stars? Oh, that's just wackadoodle, you know, yeah. crazy talk. Mm. So yeah, I have those little thoughts every now and again. But when, when all of a sudden I feel that connection from the Pleiades and the Syrian brotherhood, all of a sudden I go, yeah, okay, I get it. Okay, stop that nonsense, Amir, and that stupidity. Because that was just something that you picked up here since you came through that darn birth canal. Mm. That's all. And so um, back to what was the final part of that question? Um, and does she feel she can return to fix or correct mistakes uh, we made in the past, i.e. do we reincarnate until we reach ascension levels of understanding? So first of all, I'm, I'm having an opportunity to, to heal and release the mistakes that I deem a, a lesson. I'm able to cr claim my energy back from those experiences to empower my frequency, my soul, to completing it. I complete the karma. I end that karma. There is no mistake. You know, I've I, already grown from it, and, and it continues. I just find trying to get into the, the zone. You know, when The Secret came out, it was a, a revelation for me. It was very interesting, and... Um, so I got the DVD and I watched the DVD and um, I actually had, I actually have the Oprah um, episode where Oprah talks about the secret and then I have the secret and then I have the Oprah episode after the secret when they talk about it and it, it, them three together are very important and I, I gave them three uh, links over to my uh, the, the team that we have our Zoom team on Tuesdays, the ex-assembly group. And they have them to look at as well. And I found the secret very interesting. But out of all of it, um, and I know some people, you know, you it depends on your belief system and where your head is at will depend on what you get over. When people seeing the guy saying, you want a house, you can get a house. If you want a Ferrari, you can get a Ferrari. And there's people there who are materialistic, who are looking at that. But for me, it's getting into the headspace to actually say, because they always say, well, you have to believe you have it already. Okay, well, that's kind of easy to say, but hard to do, because if you've never had something, how can you believe you've had it? I get the feeling you've had it if you've never had it. Um, so, it's again, it's the psychology of, you know, whether it's meditation or getting into that headspace to do the manifesting. Um, to focus on that and putting the energy out to putting the energy out to the universe of something that you want is fine for me and I'm sure it's a, a fine for a lot of people but it doesn't work unless you get into the feeling of having it rather than wanting it and I think that's probably where the training would be handy to get training or to be taught how to do that because we've I've heard from guests in the past saying that certain things have now been 
remove certain blockages of energy on the planet have now been removed and now we have the ability to do x y and z and we have certain abilities well that's fantastic but just because the blockages and having the ability to do something doesn't mean we can do it because we haven't been trained how to do it that's exactly it. You hit the po- you hit the nail on the head. In fact, I, I get so ticked off, and it's one of my pet peeves, because when The Secret came out, I was living in San Diego at the time, and when that came out, I went to a viewing in a private uh, theater in San Diego. There was a limited viewing in a few cities, and that was the original, um, uh, I don't know what they call it, distribution. Mm. And that's when Abraham, Esther Hicks was part of it. Yeah. They they then removed her. And there was a huge controversy over that. And there was, I don't know, a lawsuit or something about it. They didn't they removed her because it was controversial at the time mm. about her channeling. Yeah. And I when I remember pacing the floors at night, I was so ticked off and pissed off because I could see that it was pure marketing genius. Mm. Every single person that was in that movie paid to be in the movie and were participating in part of a group. It was a paid highly, uh, cost a lot of money to be part of that group and training. And it was their marketing shtick. Mm. It was brilliant. Yeah. And the, and the very thing. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the revealing of the, the process. However, they left. It was like trying to give give you the recipe for a chocolate cake and leaving out, you know, the eggs. Yeah, yeah. And and it, it was it was like an important ingredient, and that was the feeling, mm. and alignment. Yeah. And that's where you can think with your head when you say get into your head with it. I agree to a part. I understand being in the center of my head, but that's the center of my focus, my clairvoyance. Mm. And that's how I was able to read you today, Alan. Mm. I don't read through my feelings because those are distinctive for me, Amira, and my journey, my life. Mm. And actually, when I teach people how to develop their higher levels or access them, we've turned down the lower three chakras. Why? Because I want to be in the upper realms to tune into your frequency. Then I can get accurate information. And the same is true when we look through that lens to creating and clearing the energy to manifest. So all I truly believe the most unique part of the work I do, I think, is clearing my blocks to creating and having what I want in my life. I'm the one holding me back. Mm. Yes, this universe and the frequencies on the planet, alternate dimensions are now available for us. But, but bloody hell, how do we get there? Well, this is it. And this is why I think your reading that you did for me, and we kind of touched base on a few things on what the blocks for me were. Yes. And it's, it's sometimes it's nice to be told what they are. Instead of trying to guess what they are, because sometimes, you know, you just think, I just, you're so close to the problem that you just can't see the problem. And when somebody outside says, oh, look, here's, I can see where your problem is and there's blocks and here's, here's where the blocks are. You know, this is what I've been told by your guides. This is where the blocks are. And they can go, oh, yeah, I can see. Yeah, I see where you're going. Oh, yeah, okay. That's really, it's good to have that outside person to be, very um, uh, objective um, to what the situation is and what's going on. Um, and you didn't know me from Adam. You'd give me the reading. So, you know, that's that's the, the other great thing when you do reading and you didn't say things that you wouldn't possibly know. And, you know, okay, we, we didn't, we had limited time. We we did, we did about, about 50 minutes of a reading, but we talked in between as well. Um, and I think... Uh, a concisive reading um, for me, I'd, you'd, we'd probably want to sit down for probably about two hours maybe and, you know, uh, for a reading. Now, I don't know, you know, how you work on that side, um, but I do, um, I suppose, you know, um, if you, if maybe we, we can get it done in the hour because of the, you know, and if we leave out the chat. But we did kind of talk about our backgrounds and stuff like that as well. But, yeah, no, I think it, it's great that, 
you can have a, a, an objective approach with the blockages and for people who are don't know where they're going or they want to go and do something but they just can't seem to get there and they don't know why well then Amira can help you with that and she can give you um, some pointers um, based on any blockages that you may have is that fair to say? Yeah, and I, I appreciate that, Ellen. Thank you. I I feel that at this point, and I've been doing readings and this work for over 25 years now. What? No, what year are we? It's 23 years. <laughs> um, I work now with people who really want to freaking change things. Mm. And I'm not here to just fortune tell. Yeah. I'm not here to give people all their answers. I'm here to work with you yeah. and I give people tools and techniques and a process because we are on a journey. Hmm. It is not about somebody else telling us everything. Hmm. If I told you what your gifts were at Christmas, what fun would that make it? Hmm. Right. You're here as on, as a spirit, a spirit, a soul having this journey in this human experience. Your job is to uncover the magnificence of who you are. And to intentionally be aligned with that and to manifest because you're a creator. Mm. Now, are you creating shit in your life mm. or are you create and chaos? Or would you like to create flow and being in that creative zone where you just feel like you're a rocket ship and anything's possible? Because mm -hmm. that's where I want to play. And I want to play and work with people who are ready for that. And I'm not, you know, dissing other people. It's just like, hey, I know who I want to work with now and I'm ready to help you do it. But you got to show up and you're ready to do the work and I'll assist you and I'll help you light that fire on the rocket ship. Mm. You know, my job is just to clear the crud that's limiting you. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know? that's fair enough. Yeah, that's good. Your, your soul knows what to do and where you want to go. And sometimes it's a surprise to both you and me. And that's the best, the best part. Now, spirit is showing me and showed me with your uh, particular situation that you've you've created rules and blocks for yourself, and they want you to step outside of those to experience something a new version of maybe the old you, mm -hmm. and that's that could be just a slight perspective shift, you know? Yeah. And um, and simple as that. It's just like, hey, it's not like tearing the old house down. We're just going to make a few changes, put on a new roof and put on a new facade and you'll be good to go. Mm. Yeah, so I will be obviously uh, thinking about our reading um, after the show tonight and having to think about that, that's for sure. I will definitely be doing that. Um, I have another question for you here from Joan on the chat room there. And Joan says, I am very awake. Does your guest have any suggestions for people to stay strong and positive as they are being walked on by the powers that be and people are suffering and dying? I feel your pain, Joan. I know exactly how that feels. And I have to focus on me and my purpose to be aligned and to be the light. And if we're awake, what are you here to do? Be. As you step fully into your power and show up like that, not in fear and not in judgment. Mm -hmm. To be that light that others need to see. That's what we're here to do. Mm. Yeah. Totally. And, and, and our, the emotional baggage that we carry, the judgment and our perspective, you know, I keep having to check in with myself too. Like, shut up, Amira. That's not for you to judge. You know, I remember reading a lady years ago and she came to me and I remember seeing this energy of her husband and he was a, he was a monster. It was, there was nothing good or nothing redeeming about the character. And I just, I mean, he just was a bully. He was obtuse. He was just aggressive, maybe abusive physically. And, and I remember spirit saying to me, never mind, do what you do. Mm -hmm. And I clear energy. I clear blocks. I just, and I can't even tell you or describe what I did. It's not the what or how I did it. I just did what I know in, intuitively to do. And she called me six months later and she said, Amira, I don't know what you did, but that man is completely different. And she said, I had divorce papers in my purse when I came to see you. Mm. 
She was that close. So again, it's a challenge as a healer, as a reader, as a psychic, as clairvoyant and a medium to know when to just shut up, just do what I've come here to do, my mission, to stay on that purpose and not judging it. The chaos is hard to bear, yes. Have you come and, across, I was just going to say, because you mentioned the relationship, while I'm thinking about it, sorry, have you come across people where their partner is actually in the matrix and they're outside the matrix? Because that is something that is major at the moment. Yes. In fact, my own marriage was like that. And I think the biggest part of me, well, I don't know that he was, well, we're all part of the matrix at some level, but I think, um, like, for instance, I could not even say the word astrology around my husband. And um, I knew in order to be me, fully me, to allow my full awakening, I needed to, you know, walk a different path and not with him. That was the hardest thing I ever did. I went to counseling for over a year just because, you know, divorce was devastating to me. My parents were divorced. So that was, that was big part of my challenge and walking away from people and friends over the years that said I was doing the devil's work, you know, walking away from friends and holding my head high, knowing in my heart of hearts, I'm here to do what I'm here to do and to hold fast to that and then align with other people that get it too. And hold the vibration for each other mm. and that sacred space. So that's where we need each other and to remind each other, you know, who you really are. And holding that light. Do you know, I got a message two years ago that my ex-husband shot himself. Wow. He, he couldn't He couldn't take the pressure of the, you know, the suicide is probably the biggest killer in COVID. Yeah. You know, and the fallout from that. And I'm still seeing people ramifications of, of the, the depression. Yeah, yeah. And so I, too, have struggled with depression. I'll admit that. And I constantly, when I start getting, I realize depression is stuck energy. Period. Yeah. Period. When we clear that vibration or frequency, whatever it is, and if we keep watching the shitty-ass news, guess what? We're going to be depressed because that negative energy bleeds through. And so we've got to, you know, isolate, insulate, protect, and, and shield. I don't believe, <laughs> I use the word protect, and I don't mean it in the way that everybody else thinks that we can put up a mirror or put up a, a, a shield around our aura. It, we are energy. Energy is continually moving. Mm. We have to build a light frequency from within, and that becomes a natural deflector not a protective we can still be attacked yeah. we can still be invaded it is permeable mm -hmm. but when that energy field is strong and condensed with your frequency and that of the higher frequencies that you have connection to that is that powerful force brilliant okay we have a question from jim and jim wants to know are you aware of previous lives and aware of any souls or beings you have encountered in this incarnation from previous lives. Thank you. So in terms of friends or relationships that I might have known in another life, yes, that's occurred to me. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I am aware of my previous lives and some of them. So some of them have shown up along my journey of healing to show me that I get to step beyond. Like one time, I, it's funny enough, years and years ago, I recall going to past life regression. And it was with a priest, actually. He was, I guess, a recovering priest <laughs> because he, or an undercover priest that was doing past life regressions. And I remember being in a, in a small, small spaceship. And it was almost like a single seater, like a submarine, mm. but I was a single occupant and I was from another star system. And honestly, Ellen, I, I'm just remembering that I dismissed it. I don't even talk about it. Oh, okay. And so, so, you know, that was sort of a precursor to, you know, some of the, the, the continued awareness that I continue to have. But yeah, I have, I have memories and lifetimes of being a, a, a nun and, you know, making vows of poverty and, you know, being able to step out of that and step past that limitation. I, and I've worked with clients too and move out the past lives that are keeping them stuck. Or when we're trying to 
process multiple lives and complete the karma in this life, they're not relevant to this life. So I can easily move those lifetimes and their frequency or the, let's call it a cord or their connection to this lifetime, move them back into the Akashic records where they belong. So they're not influencing you. It's this uh, karmic seed from previous lives, yeah. Right. So some of the seeds and some of the information are positive and helpful for me on this path. Some of it is not. And so, like I said, if I'm trying to complete karma from another life and it's not helping me for this life in terms of what I want to manifest, the lessons I want to learn, I can complete that and move it out. Hmm. Okay. We have the power. <laughs> we have the power. We just have to know how to use the power and how to focus it. Okay, another question from Joan, and Joan wants to know a question. I do believe our collective love energy does go out into the ether. How do we deal with those evils that know that and maybe change things to their way? Wow, that's a deep and powerful question. Look, I reflect back in that kaleidoscope of color and light that I am and the force of all creation and being in that space, and then having the the mastery to be able to deflect or to move it out. And that brings upon me a, a, a message I had when I was in the King's Chamber one time. And I'm still asking the questions, Joan, so I don't know that I'm going to completely answer it clearly, but these masters descended down And they came down a staircase and they were from other lifetimes and other places, other, other dimensions. They came down and they all transformed into something unique that was completely cookie cutter. They were all the same. And then the line divided and they said, one, the first line said, we are the masters of the light. And the second line said, we are the masters of the dark. Who do you follow? So my first thing, yeah, first that I follow the masters of the light, but I am still scratching my head to how do I know? Mm. And they will mask themselves as the light. Mm. And so I think that's kind of what happens. And we're starting to see, you know, even some charlatans or leaders that are appearing to be of the light. Are they? And so, again, I I am challenged with being present, being still, knowing who I am, and continuing to listen, but not judge and to not, you know, hook my wagon on any horse. Well, of course, you I mean, you will have your own belief systems and you have to make sure that your belief systems don't seep into your professional readings, what you're doing with somebody. Well, that's right. And my belief systems have changed. You know, my belief system when I was, you know, had my first communion is way different than it is today. Yeah. You know, when my father died, my belief system, I didn't even, being Catholic, I never even believed we had continue on. But that's when my world of understanding that I could communicate to the other side and and started that whole discovery of of seeing other, you know, people through other dimensions and communicating with them. So every step of the way we're evolving and and taking in more truths of the universe. So does it ever end? Do I have all the answers? Hell no. Mm. Oh, Heavens well, no. Heavens well, we no. Ne- <laughs> we never have the answers. We, we'll carry on learning. It's just a pity that I've come across people that are just happy with their law. And they're happy. They don't want to educate. They don't want to learn anymore. Organically, they'll learn a few things. But they're basically saying, oh, I'm done with learning. And that's it. I'm happy with that. Where I find when we when you step outside the matrix, you become hunger for knowledge and hunger for information. And you carry on. And for me, I carry on learning and studying and watching and learning and making mistakes and, you know, having a certain opinion. And I'll change my opinion if something new comes in. And again, the fluid belief system. Um, which I talk about. And so I'm, that's how I feel. But there are some people who are happy with their lot and, and that's fine as well. But I just, I think there's so much more that we have to learn as we grow, even as we get older. Um, that does, you know, like if I know what I know now in 10 years time, 
what will I know? I mean, that's incredible to think of. What will I know in 10 years' time with what I know now? And if it's, you know, I'd like to think I know a good bit, but I'd probably know a hell of a lot more in 10 years' time. And my belief system will be changed in pre- probably in 10 years' time. So it's it's fun thinking about that in a positive way, looking forward to educating and learning and growing, um, even at my age. Um, so, yeah, so keep on doing it. We have another question from, well, it's more of a comment um, from Joan. It's this question comment, right? And Joan said that, a lady I know believes in the doctor totally. She was given two months to live six years ago, housebound, unable to walk. A local healer I know visited her. When he left her that day, she could walk. Six years later, she's still out and about and shopping on her own. Her mind has been totally opened to other things. Well, there you go, Joan. That's an example of someone who was stuck in the system in a belief. And what the trouble is, well, the one trouble is for some people, they, no matter how sick they are, like they could have stage four cancer. And when they say, look, if you don't, you surely if try anything rather than death. And yet they still are not prepared to try alternative solutions. The doctor has all the answers, but she was willing to try and she did. And she tried the healer and, she benefited from it and that's the thing is to try and get people out of this programming societal programming that we all you know get given by the system and we get stuck in our belief systems and we're not willing even when we're sick some people are sick they're not willing to try an alternative um and you know it's it's it is what it is some people are ready some people aren't and we all have our time that we have to um, we might have our awakening, and there's a massive awakening going on now. I'm sure you're seeing it. Uh, oh, my uh, gosh, yeah. Yes, and, you know, I, I reflect on that. I, I get frustrated, too, with people that I want more for them, I can see more for them, and they're just complacent or they're stuck. It's a stuck. It's a vibration, a frequency, and and they don't have the soul strength to carry on or to push through it, you know. And some of them choose they they they're they are they are afraid there's fear on on who and what they'll become or leaving behind people they love and or leaving behind their pathetic you know bar stool and so everybody's attached to whatever they're attached to and that's part of the soul's growth right yeah. and as we as we mature in our spiritual understanding and cosmic awareness we have to be just patient and accepting of their where they're at, and it's not for me to judge or to hurry them along if they choose or not. That's I'm it. here to shine my light and bless them. That's it, exactly. And I know, you know, it's something that you know people do in the truth movement. We want to give them the information and wake them up and everything else. But you know, I've talked about this time and time again, you know, on the show, and I've given people the tools psychologically to use if they want to do that but sometimes people are just not ready for that information you know you're i always say when i when i spoke at the seminar you always have an uncle john and an auntie joan and you never give them this information you talk about the weather and the garden and every everything else because they're just not ready for that maybe in the next life they'll be ready for it but some people are just not ready for it they're just comfortable in their life and you just let them get on with it and we have to accept that yeah, and appreciate them for who they are and how they're showing up and deciding to be more mm-hmm. or be who we are, mm-hmm. not let them keep us where they think we should be. Mm. Exactly. So tell us that you've, you've done this now for, I think you said 23 years. Um, tell us what you, what you do. What's your, your, what, what kind of, uh, services do you offer people who are in a situation now that they think, man, I need my life changing. I need to find out what's going on. Tell us what, what, what you offer us to, uh, to help these people. Well, first thing, they could go to my website, amirahall.com and there, I have a free, it's a training. It's called The Reset. It's a free training. There's three videos and I guide you through a workbook for you to take a, an, an overview of what's going on in your life and what area that maybe you need to focus on or where we would start focusing. Some people think, 
you know, let's say every part of their life is falling apart when really maybe they got it together when three out of five or four out of five. So it's good to have a snapshot of where they're sort of dropping the ball. And I offer a a free consultation, a 30 minute where we can talk about the next step and where where would you best focus your energy and intentions. From there, I typically take people on a four session, their four one hour journey of where I begin clearing the energy, the blocks. Because as I said before, your spirit, your soul knows exactly why you're here. And my job as a facilitator here is to help you embody that light and shine it bright. But we have to clear some interferences. That's it. You've picked them up from the family, from your school, from our education, our culture, our television programming. And all of that, those patterns, those I call them malware, the viruses that we've collected along the way, unconsciously, we just start clearing them. And I share these tools. I call them quantum energy tools. We just start. They're basically short guided visualizations, but they're specific. They're not to leave the body. I start to teach you how to be present in the body for you to embody more of your light. As we release these unconscious blocks and patterns and beliefs, um, that frees up your spirit to shine brighter. That literally turns into a magnet to attract your innermost heart's desires. And that requires very little effort. Then, Alan, you'll be inspired. Geez, you know what? There's an event down at such and such a place. I'm going to just sign up and go talk. And I'm going to go to this event and just meet some people or or whatever it might be. Okay, Alan, I'm not putting words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Those aren't aren't hints or anything. It's just spirit channeling through me. No, that's that's, Um, that's fine. Sometimes... You know, that's great, and I, I, I totally agree with you. You know, life and family do get in the way at times, unfortunately. That's the way it is. But um, it's something that, you know, uh, if something comes up, and I find it's going to be interesting or empowering or will add to my knowledge, then I, I'm all up for that. I was going to uh, uh, ask you as well, which I think is important with people as well, is that, do you actually scan people regarding entities and attachments and stuff? Because obviously over the last two years, you know, we've, we've had an awful lot of issues with the, the jab and everything else and, and people feeling in a certain way and uh, all that kind of stuff. So would your first port of call be, well, let's clean you up first before we get started? Well, the work I do encompasses body, mind, spirit. So sometimes spirit shows us some specific things that we need to do to take care of the physical body. You know, if I, I often see ailments. I see where there's problems, uh, maybe particular organs sometimes or a particular protocol that you need to embrace. They will give me that guidance. Yes, entities, beings, um, portals, doorways that they come in, I close those first of all. And then the thought forms that they, they came in on in the first place. And yes, there's these snake beings, they're controlling money on the planet. And they're, they're destroying a lot of things that we'd like to create, right? And or we gotta play part of the game with is what we call money, but there's a way to play it that's in alignment with who and what you are. So, um, Yes, so whether it's entities, whether it's past life, ancestral patterns and programming, um, alien implants. I remember a, a woman calling me years ago and her son all, all of a sudden started going kind of weird. He was only nine years old. She goes, geez, he's depressed and he's causing trouble at school. They want to put him on Ritalin. And so, you know, we she got pretty excited about that. So I was taking a look at him and I said, geez, you know, This was years ago, before really I even really thought too much about aliens. I said, I see these the spaceship and these aliens plugged into his head. And they're literally using his mind, his brain, and they're looking through his eyes to peer into the world. They're using him as a human periscope. Mm. And they're learning through uh, of us through him. And and she said, oh, my God, she goes, all his drawings on the fridge from school are aliens and ETs and ships. So I removed the connection. I, I disconnected the connection from the mothership and just sent it on its way. 
And she got in the car, she went to pick him up at school and, and she said, Oh honey, I talked to Amira today and she, she sent ET home. And he said, Oh mom, they were my friends. Mm. So he was very well aware of their presence and their activity, but that stopped the depression that stopped him from causing trouble at school. And he was back out playing with his friends again. So you, you you might say that if there's a if there is some kind of entity attachment, you, they might suffer from Stockholm syndrome and not want the entity to go, even though it's not doing them any, any good. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's not only ETs; it's other beings. And you know, think of a this is an infinite universe. God knows what you know incredible beings there are out there that are nefarious. Some of them, we have guides and teachers sometimes that are plugged too far in, into our energy field. And when we bring them in unknowingly, they get too close. It's like having a, you know, a, a television screen right in front of your nose. You can't see or hear them. It's too close. So we have to move them outside of the energy field, the aura, just so that they're at the edge. Then we can clearly communicate with them and get the messages and feel the guidance and so, take action. Okay, so do um, when you do reading, uh, do you have their guides, the people's guides there? Do they come in, or is it just family members, or um, you know what way? I mean, is is it just a mix depending on the person? Yes, it's a mix. It depends on their level of awareness and understanding. I work with a lot of people grieving lost loved ones, and they will come in. And um, and oftentimes in readings, like I think we had a visit from your grandmother. Mm. She didn't have a whole lot to say, but she had something significant that got your attention. Mm. And so, yeah, they're around us all the time, but it just depends, you know, what do we mostly need to hear, heal and clear and hear? Mm. And so everything, every single reading is different. I follow the spirit guidance of the person that I'm speaking with. Mm-hmm. They're they're the sitter, and so it's sort of a free for all. It's wonderful fun. Yeah, no, it's uh, readings are the uh, it, it is interesting when especially when family members come in, and um, you know they have uh, you know messages and stuff like that. You know, it, it, for people because there are you know, obviously the atheists out there just believe that we die and that's it. You know, so um, and I've interviewed um, a lady years ago called called Doctor Diane Cochran, who interviewed over a thousand people who had NDE experiences, and some of them people were atheists, and they are uh, they were completely changed. Funny enough, absolutely, when yeah, they came back, yeah. <laughs> which, which <laughs> yeah, is amazing, am- isn't it? Which is amazing to see. So, what's your plans for the future, Amira? What's what do you have planned for twenty twenty three for your your own career and what you want to do and what you want to get out there? Well, you know, every year I ask for a word that will guide me. And this year, my word is inspire. So as much as I've sort of tried to keep my NDE sort of undercover, and I didn't want to speak about it for years, you know, my thesis is near-death experiences and their spiritual transformation. That's the subject matter. And I've been guided to speak more to people who are seeking their answers and and questioning the afterlife and wanting to communicate with loved ones. So I feel that that's coming in stronger. Um, But I'm also here to empower other leaders who have sort of been holding themselves back like I did and uh and need to be seen need to be heard as as masses are awakening you and, know and and do you and that, see that ahead, on the global, so do you see that on a global scale that you're seeing more people who need to need to come out or are coming out to change the energy of the planet yes as i said before there will be many charlatans among you there's many people posing as experts but there's very few masters hmm. And, you know, the mastery is something that we've come here to um, embody, those of us who are called anyways. And so those are the people I feel that I'm being in a position to now inspire and work with and help them show up. Mm. And, of course, the children, obviously, are, are that are born uh, today, a lot of them are, are what, indigo children um, I think they're they're called crystal children who are, you know, probably going to be leading the way. Hopefully, they lead the way, and 
you know, not have this kind of woke society. Hopefully that will just, that's just the fad like skateboards and that woke society will just go by the wayside. And we'll, well, you know, have... it's a pattern. It's a, yeah. it's a program. Mm. It's, it's a destructive force that has no light in it. Mm. You know, yeah. there's no light. It's flat. It's much like the transgenderism. And, um, that those are, those are souls divided and confused. You know, they're not in alignment. They're not in authentic alignment. That's all. And it's no judgment on them, but it's our job to come into alignment, whatever that looks like. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, we have a lot of work to do. I think we all have a lot of work to do from a spiritual side. And I think half the battle, like the, what I mentioned earlier about health is to, understand that there's more to life than just this physical meat suit that we're in that we're in the spiritual uh, side as well the, the spiritual realm and i normally say to people and this is just my perception on it is that there's three stages to this life there's the matrix which, which a lot of people are in then we become aware of the elites and cabal and what's going on in the world and then we become self-aware of who we are from a spiritual point of view and an energetic point of view and you know sometimes people jump from the matrix to the becoming self-aware and they don't understand they always say well i'm down here doing all the spiritual stuff but i don't really know why i'm down here doing this but i like it anyway and then you say to them well you know, you're here and you're doing this work because of you, you skip the awareness part. And, and they, they say, but I oh, know you're just a conspiracy theorist. And I think, hang on, you're the person who talks to nobody and you're calling me a conspiracy theorist. And I've had this debate with a couple of spiritual people and they, again, they weren't ready for it, you know. But I have a question here just come in from, um, Peter and Joan and, uh, Joan said, uh, does your guest believe in gut instinct and its power? Good instinct, did you say? A gut. You know when you say oh, oh, gut, gut in instinct. Well, I see it. Gut instinct is typically coming from your clairsentient. That's the third chakra, second and third chakra area, um, where I teach people and come up to finding higher level information is through the clairvoyant space, the third eye, the sixth chakra. And so, yes, gut instinct, that is a natural intuition. However... We're also filtering through our own personal experience. So, yes, sometimes that's why it can be accurate sometimes, and then other times it's wrong. And so we're filter, we're actually receiving the information through our own column prejudices, or a, it's a filtering that's jading us. Mm. So I think that's the distinction and learning how to get the clearest information is, is coming up through that, to the higher levels accessing higher levels of information by shutting down my own personal bias and yeah. getting completely neutral information. Well, I'd kind of say, rather than say, go from the gut, go from the heart. And obviously your soul will always tell you the truth. It's your mind that confuses the issue. And um, so they're the two things that I'd kind of say. And, you know, it, automatically we say, the solar plexus gut instinct, but you know, maybe we shouldn't be pointing at the gut. Maybe we should be pointing at the heart. And uh, what does that, what does your heart tell you? Um, so yeah, so maybe it's just a, a reference point that we've all, all used over the years, gut instinct, but maybe that needs to be changed. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But Peter said, uh, here, question comment. Peter said, before you die, you make a bucket list of things you want to do before you die. How about a bucket list of things you do after you die? <laughs> I love that. Uh, but ha having delved into people from the other side, it depends on the consciousness that we create here is what we create on the next step. Right. Okay. So do you, okay. So, so what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. Well, this is the thing. Well, a lot of people, you know, I've, I've watched one or two interviews of people having an NDE experience. And one guy said, that depending on how you use your energy in this world, i.e. how you treat people and all that kind of stuff, will depend on your karma credits on the other side, what you can do. So if you've been a negative, selfish person who's hurt people and all that, you're going to be limited to your ability on the other side. But if you've been, you know, 50% or more service to others and, and been good, and using the energy, then your obviously karma credit is going to be a lot more. You can do a lot more. 
Now, that was what he was told when he was over there. I don't know. Well, you know, I've listened to a lot of NDEs and I stopped because I started to understand that everybody's NDE was reflective on where they're at in their personal development. Yeah. And their perception of the other side based. Yeah. So, so I, in, in reading, um, the people on the other side, I have started to piece together a quilt of, of experiences. For instance, this one man came through and he was in his work shed and he was continual. He was like a, a GIF or a GIF, however you guys say it over there is, is this little mini video that just kept looping. Mm. And he was just planing this wood and planing this wood and planing this wood. And, and I said to her, I said, well, this is his heaven. His heaven is being in his workshop. Yeah. And so was that an image or a picture of what he wanted her to see that he was happy? Or was that a place that his soul and his spirit was actually stuck? And I don't believe that if we've done bad things, it's necessarily a determination on where we go, because I believe that people come here to choose particular roles as instigation or as teachers for other people. So again, it's a chicken or egg thing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I've chosen to be a Hitler because I've come in to teach people this massive big lesson that we're looking to create, recreate again. Yeah, we've talked, you know? you, we talk about this with soul groups and in soul groups, you decide who you're going to be to, for that person to learn the lesson. And, and this is why a lot of people can't understand when it comes to the likes of abuse and rape and all that kind of stuff. People go, I oh, don't be silly. Who would agree to do that? But they're not looking at it on a higher level. They're looking at it on a 3D level. And with this soul contract, um, that you agree to learn from that lesson. And um, and you have to kind of get your head around that as well. Um, and it's it's interesting, the soul group thing, plus the fact that when Phil Newton wrote them two books, Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls, which is very good, and he's a PhD, he was saying that obviously you don't, uh, they don't judge you, you judge yourself and you do your own review when you get over there. It's just interesting for people who have done an NDE that that review doesn't take place from what I have seen so far because... Basically, you're going to be coming back. So maybe you're not ready for that review. Well, and as I pointed out, the review for me was all uh, how I was creating my life. Mm. And so all of it was all about, you know, how I was destroying it. Not yeah. what I was creating. Okay, that was your review, yeah? Yeah, when I saw the timeline. That was basically, I interpret it as, as a review, I was seeing only where I was destroying my health, how I was destroying relationships, how I was destroying my career, and things that I was creating based on my emotions. Right. Okay. So, and learning how to develop or to release that to become in a flow and to be a more con to be a conscious creator. That's what we're here to do. I believe we have come here in body to learn how to be a conscious creator. What do I want to create? Do I, do I want to create chaos in my life? A shitty relationship or a, be with a husband or a person that's going to abuse me? Whether it's a female, a friend, I will not. I walk away from friendships or any kind of relationship that's abusive, period, because of why I value myself. Not because I, I deem them bad, because I value myself and I just don't choose to be in that experience. I was just, I just had a thought there. Well, it could be a thought or download. Um, just kind of finishing up uh, our <laughs> chat. And, um, you know, there's a, a dating site out there on the internet called Plenty of Fish. And I was, <laughs> and I was thinking, what if we had a dating site for people who are spiritually rare called Plenty of Spirit? <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, that's funny. That's, I just came, just, I don't know, just came into me again, one of these mad things. Right. Before I let you go, there's a couple of questions, questions have come in very quickly. We'll get them in. Joan wants to know if people have no belief system in religion or family become ill and know they are going to die, they look for someone to aid them. Is that them waking up? Um, well, I think they want aid, meaning to understand or to pass over um, or to release the fear 
I'm not quite sure what you mean by coming to aid them. Yeah, well, you know, there's atheists who might be in, in hospital, and sometimes they change very quickly to religion or yeah, God, uh-huh. you know, um, and uh, they look for someone to aid them. Yeah, well, if they're, if they're atheists and they don't believe in God or anything like that, then maybe they're looking for somebody. I mean, what do you do? I mean, I, I find... Well, you turn them over to God. <laughs> Let well, them take I, their journey, take well, their step. Think about that for a minute. You're Imagine, well, I'm not an atheist, right? But just for a minute, I'm going to try being an atheist. And you're in bed and you've got stage four cancer. And you're, you're, so you know spirituality because you don't believe in any of that. And you just know you, when you die, you die. That's your belief. That must be very empty and vacant and harrowing to have that thought before you pass over, thinking that that's all there is. Right. Well, my ex-husband took his own life Mm. and he was an atheist. Mm. And I believe depression and I believe, again, these conscious blocks limit you. And that's what you think is atheism. Now, after he crossed, I tried to connect with him. And it was, it's been over two years. And only over the last few months has his spirit started to reach me. And it was interesting because all of a sudden it's starting to get lighter and brighter. I've been doing work on him because we can heal, send healings to those on the other side. It was like he was stuck in what, what you know we call a limbo. But it doesn't mean he's stuck forever. And he started showing me these times in our, our relationship together where they were actually happy and really fun. Mm. You know, and, and And I believe I was getting to heal. He was healing and I was healing those moments in time. So that his soul can move on. So, atheist or not, we still have a journey. Yeah, totally, totally. And um, right, okay, we're going to call it there because we've reached that time. Thank you very much for coming on the show and reaching out, and thank you for the reading before the show. Much appreciated. I'll be taking on board the comments that you made in the reading, and maybe down the line, you know, we might do a. We, I think we should do a part two down the line. We see where we are, and maybe we can do a part two on on the reading as well, if that's uh, if that's possible. But a big thank you for coming on. Before I let you go, give out all your details there, where people can uh, contact you should they want to have a reading from yourself, and and all your bits and pieces there. Okay, well, thank you for being so gracious and hosting me today. Um, it's been an honor. My website is amirahall.com. That's A-M-I-R-A-H-H-A-L-L.com. And I look forward to speaking to you soon or seeing you on the astral plane, Alan. Hey, you never know. We might have this solar flash that comes in and we all go in 5D and I'll, I'll see you in the 5D bar and I'll buy the fourth drink. How's that? Hey, we're already 5D. <laughs> oh, okay. Brilliant. Boy, listen, I'm still getting bills in my post. So <laughs> I'm still getting, we might have 5D energy, but I'm getting 3D bills through my post box. So that will have to change. Mira, thank you for coming on. Much appreciated. Enjoy the chat. Just stay with me there for a minute. I'm going to just go off to a musical break. We'll be back after this. You're listening to Alan James on Circle of White Light Radio and People's Internet Radio. There you go, folks. That's Amira Hall. She's a psychic mentor and does loads of stuff all in the spiritual side. As I say, she gave me a reading before the show and it was very interesting and she brought up things that she wouldn't possibly know, which is a great uh, uh, giveaway for me to know that she's tuning in and she's getting the right information. And it was the, the classic reading where I should up and she talks and I like that. You know, I like that kind of reading, so that's great. So fair play to Amira for reaching out and wanting to come on the show and doing the reading as well. So maybe in a few weeks' time or a few months' time, we'll get Amira back on. We'll do a part two. Now, as I said, one of the things Amira said was, Alan, you, the Spirit is saying you have to get yourself out there. They want you out there. And I said, oh, God, okay, okay. So look, um, just for the hell of it, right, just for the, the hell of it, if... You have a group of people that you know and you want me to come down to your location and have a talk, um, an all fair talk and discussion about things and stuff like that. I'm more than happy to do that. And, you know, uh, you know, to be a little kind of donation book or whatever, just to cover the petrol and stuff like that. I'd be more than happy to do that if you want me to do that. 
Um, so there you go. The the offers there. I'm putting it out to the universe. So don't say I didn't do it on the show publicly. I'm putting it out there. Right. Take care. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe. Have a great week. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. You have been listening to Circle of White Light Radio. Focusing on solutions and thinking different.